Hi there, um, this is demo of my 3D program. Um, I've been making and it is using a deferred shader. So this scene here is form lighting on the sponsor model. Um, as you can see, um, each texture um, in the model has its own specular diffuse and ambient material and each reacts to the light slightly different. So deferred shading is a way you can render pretty much it renders to texture um, instead of rendering straight to screen and by doing this it means when you use multiple lights um, or your lighting pass it is um, slightly easier on your GPU um, because it simply looks at the pixels which should be receiving the light. Um, so to do this you make separate buffers for each um, segment or texture, should we say? Um, so the first is simply your vertex data. Um, this, the reason this is blue is because it's inverted um, to the negative for the lighting. It, so it's just blue as it is. Um, the surface normals, um, as you can see when you face them, they're blue. When you get to the left of them. Um, when they're to the left of the camera, they go red and they're green when they face up. Um, so as we rotate the camera, you can probably see the change. Is it change from red to blue here? And we move back. So this is just the surface normals of each object in the scene. If you change to the the map normals, you won't see a difference in every object. For instance, the wall, as you can see, um, the difference there. You can see the bricks now, um, because it's using a normal map. So, as well as different shading, we've also got normal map support for the lighting. This is simply the ambient light, so the only thing that's getting rendered here is the textures with the ambient, which is why it's slightly darker than the rest of the scene. This is the diffuse light, which uses a normal map, so it looks darker than the ambient again because every object in the scene's diffuse is probably um, slightly less than the ambient in the material file. This is the screen space ambient occlusion. Um, what this essentially does is outlines the edges of objects and occludes them so where you look at the camera um, if the pixel can't really or shouldn't be seen from that viewpoint, it essentially shades it um, and gives it, as you can see, it looks like shading. Um, so the objects that are white um, don't have any shading, the objects that are black do. And when you take this into the final one with the form, as you can see, black outlines the shading. Um, that's where the ambient term is black. It's quite high in this demo just to show it off, but essentially it is just doing the shading. So if I alter between this here, as you can see, the form you've seen the shading disappear. Um, so that's the sponsor model um, with form, normal mapping, and screen space ambient occlusion. So I'm now going to go on to separate model. This model is quite dark compared to the last one but essentially it's the same thing. Um, again we've got separate, <coughs> separate textures and um, each one renders. So this is our vertices again, our surface normals. The map normals as you can see, you can see more detail. The ambient pass. The fuse pass this time is extremely dark because in the, te the material file there isn't actually a value and um, the screen space ambient occlusion again which outlines and the final scene which is really dark because the diffuse light is so dark but as you can see they're shading well it should be shading <coughs> now we're going to load a, just a cube it simply has normal mapping applied again using deferred shading so each term vertices surface normals map normals um, that we apply the normal map from. 
Welcome being pass. A diffuse pass this time, the diffuse light is slightly brighter so we can actually see it. It looks fairly normal map, but obviously not as bright as when you apply the ambient as well. And the screen space ambient occlusion, because there's not many vertices in this one, um, the effect isn't so noticeable. It's put together. You can see slight shading at the top from the ambient occlusion, but compared to the other models it's not really that effective. Um, now we're going to look at parallax occlusion mapping. Again, deferred shadings, so same applies, but this time we can actually affect the texture to self occlude using parallax occlusion mapping. As you can see, as you move around, the effect is fairly noticeable. Um, and it looks really quite good. Um, move to the side. Again, you can see it. And we can affect the, the term so we can make it really quite noticeable and it looks quite strange. Obviously this is not how it's used in games. Um, and we can also bring it out the other way and give it quite a, a weird effect. It's just by changing the bias term. And the last one is again another cube. Again parallax occlusion mapped. But just a different texture to show it off again. Unfortunately this one um, has a halo in effect because it's deferred shading they all use textures. The vertex texture um, isn't getting remapped with the new texture coordinates which is giving the halo effect but um, I'm looking for a fix to get that sorted but as you can see the, the effect still works really well um, and it makes it look 3D <coughs> and give it depth even though it's just a simple texture. Um, I'll show that there. So that's the normals now that have been affected by the bias term. Um, that's our ambient pass, so you can see. It's a diffuse pass, quite dark again. Our ambient occlusion, as you can see, um, the vertices there are occluded. And that's pretty much it. Um, thanks for watching, and cheers.